If you are watching the replay, I'm Corinne Crabtree from pnptribe.com. And if you want to take my free weight loss course, it's a video and a workbook that has helped thousands of women at this point lose some weight. You can go to pnp411.com, click on the big free course. It is legit free. I give it away. I also podcast at Losing 100 Pounds with Fit and Fat. So there's no excuse for not getting the help you need when it comes to weight loss. Uh, today, what I want to talk about though, is it's a little bit tied into weight loss because I noticed that a lot of, I've just gotten a ton of requests from you guys, both from the free Facebook, my private tribe members, in email, all the podcast listeners about seasonal affective disorder. I just want to start with saying that everything I'm going to talk about today is I am no expert. I am no doctor. I have not been trained in this. None of that has happened. So don't come in and be like, where's your science to back that shit up? It's like, if you're looking for science, go somewhere else. There's this thing called Google and you can do all the research you want over there. All I'm going to do is talk to you about like shit that I've been through and the way I handle it and the things that I encourage my tribe members to do. Uh, and the reason why, and let me just say, I had a completely different topic for today. Uh, I'd been planning it out in my mind as I was working out. If you're wondering why I always look so fabulous, it's because this eight o'clock live literally comes on the heels of my morning workout on Wednesdays. <laughs> so I go straight from the garage, straight to you. Um, but I was like just scrolling through Facebook as I was cooling down. And I think I saw at least 10 different posts in my tribe and in our subgroups and the free group and stuff and it was women de dealing with depression and dealing with you know the weather changing and all this other kind of stuff so hey melissa she says she's a groupie who's done that free course and lost 35 pounds if you're wondering if that free course is really for free yes it is and she's lost 35 pounds so here's the thing um as most of you know or if you're newer to me you may not know let me just give you a quick rundown of where I've been and where I'm at now in terms of depression and weight loss. So when I was a kid, I was always overweight. Um, at the time of I was about nine is when my weight just started skyrocketing. And I was probably, well, I was 210 pounds in the eighth grade. I was anywhere from say 175 to 200 all throughout high school. Um, then I got into my 20s and I was bouncing up and down between 250 and 175. I, you know, did all kinds of crazy diets. So I always had a weight problem. And then also when I was in high school, I had problems with depression. And when I look back on it, it really started, I think, getting bad, I would say, when I was about 16. Um, I was uh, just going through things. And I just remember that that was probably about the time when I just noticed that I was sad a lot and that it was a struggle to feel good about myself. And then when I was 17, I attempted suicide. And it was like, I just remember for months feeling so hopeless, um, getting to the point to where I knew something was really wrong with myself. I was writing letters, like like all the classic symptoms of someone who wants to take their life. I went through all of that, and then I finally attempted suicide on Mother's Day of 2000 or 1992. Uh, I was in a coma, um, just like down in the dumps. I was very fortunate that I didn't die. I was found in time. I had swallowed like, I think 67 pills or something like that. It was a mixture of my grandfather's meds. So he had like sleeping pills, blood pressure pills, um, gout pills. <laughs> like, I guess if I'd had problems with gout, I solved that one real quick. Um, but anyway, they found me and I lived. Um, I went through years of therapy. Uh, it was a very hard time of my life. It was very hard on my family. Um, but we've had depression run in my family and um, I was not immune to it. So throughout my 20s, I went through therapy. I had weight problems. I, you know, was up and down with depression. Had my son when I was, in fact, Chris and I the other day we were talking about and I'm like, I think we've been wrong about how old we were when we met. <laughs> I didn't realize like, oh my gosh, it's just, I think it's just fuzzy memories. But 
it was in 2002 he was born. And that was a really hard year for me. It was the only other time I think I can really remember where um, I was really questioning if I was going to be able to make it. I I'm, was never diagnosed with postpartum depression, but looking back, I know I had it. He was born in October, about the same time the weather changes. And my depression, when on Mother's Day, when I tried to commit suicide, came off the hills of winter. I am not saying that the weather did it all, but I can look back over my history and some of my biggest bouts of depression seemed to be triggered or got, like, got worse through this time of year. So it's one of the reasons why this time of year I'm very particular about my self-care, about what I do for myself. I really watch how I eat. I really watch how I think and stuff. And let me just kind of, I want to go through it and then you guys can um, ask me questions and stuff. Because uh, I, I honestly don't mind talking about it. It's one of those things where um, even my own father, I don't know if he's watching, but my dad sometimes watches the lives. Um, he's, he's attempted suicide in his past too. It's just, you know, I, and I was watching something yesterday about this. It's like, I just feel like I was meant to be here for a reason and I want to make the best of it. And it's not always easy. I'll just say, it's not super easy to talk about, it's, but I don't have shame and stuff over it. I just think I feel so compassionate for people who really struggle with it because I know how terrible it feels. I mean, it's when you're that depressed, it's, you know, you just feel so hopeless. And it is like, like I, even on my worst day when I'm pissed off or I feel like, oh, what a bad day I'm having and stuff. It gives me perspective because I just think, God, any moment you, you get the opportunity to think different because you've learned how to do it. And I think it's one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about with my weight loss clients. It's like, I don't want to give you meal plans because that's not where the fix is. You have to learn how to truly understand how your mind works, what to do about it, and think different. So, anyway, this time of year, I get very aware that, um, like, I don't go into it scared at all. What I've done is I've decided to look at this time of year as my opportunity to prepare to take care of myself the best I can. That is such a huge shift for me. I have had years where I've been terrified of the winter, where I just knew that it was going to be like the thing that, you know, took me down or whatever. And I really understood that that was really hampering me, that, you know, depression feeds on negativity. So I needed to clean up, one, how I was looking at this time of year. Like I really needed to start thinking about, this is my opportunity to care for myself. This is not an opportunity to be worried about myself. So <clears throat> one of the things that I do is I get very particular about how I eat this time of year. I also get very particular about like, I like my wine, depression, loves a drunk. <laughs> so I get very particular about planning my alcohol so that I'm not relying on it to feel good, that like I'll make a plan for, like I have planned wine tonight with my husband. We're going out to dinner for our Thanksgiving celebration. I have it written down. I've thought about it. It's there, right? I do that so that it's always top of mind. It's always thought about ahead of time and it's not something I just do in reaction to a bad day. I don't need that problem in my life. Uh, I also do the food and not because I've lost 100 pounds. Like I literally don't plan my food because of that part. I plan to eat things that are gonna make me feel better. I know for me, like when I'm getting lots of good fruits, lots of good vegetables and specifically healthy fats, I feel better. I feel better mentally. I feel better bowel wise. <laughs> like all the things are working. So I eat with the intention of feeling better, which is different from eating so I can feel like escape how bad I feel. That's what I did for years and years and years. So I flopped my thinking about how, 
you know, getting good nourishment and stuff was how I took care of my brain and how I took care of my mood. When I used to overeat, like I refuse to ever say, and I want to encourage all of you to refuse to ever think about this, that eating comforts you, that eating somehow makes you feel better. It does not. I just, like, if you're not ready to let go of your food for your mood, at least be honest with yourself and tell yourself, I'm eating because I feel bad. Like, you've got to get it straight in your brain how that food is, what it's really doing. All it's doing is serving a reactionary purpose to your mood. It's not doing anything for you. And when you think it is and you keep telling yourself that food is you know, like when you're overeating or when you're eating junk because you feel emotionally bad, you keep telling yourself that it's, hap it's helpful, you'll never be able to stop it. I am telling you right now that, that, that in tribe members, for y'all, we can talk about this in the Facebook group, but that is a real key when it comes to emotional eating is being very honest and very truthful about what's going on because if you're not honest and truthful, if you make it seem like it's a good deal or that it's helping you or doing something for you, this is what ends up happening. You'll never break it. Why would you? Because the alternative will be to just feel bad. Your brain can't wrap itself around that concept. So I get very deliberate about planning my food this time of year. I make sure I have lots of greens. Anything, guys, anything that's like colorful, if God made it, have it. Please do not ask me, can I have bread? I don't give a shit if you eat bread or not, to be honest. Bread is not your problem. I want you thinking about, like, think bigger for just a minute. Like, set aside weird-ass diet rules and every bullshit thing you've ever learned. And let's just think about the best version of us, the one who's lost all their weight, the one who feels good in their body, the one who manages their depression like a boss, is she on a fucking live asking about a piece of bread? If she's not, then stop. Realize that's your problem. You get so caught up in the minutia, you forget to even think about the best version of you. Once she's lost all of her weight and stuff, does she like sit around in confusion about bread? No, it keeps you stuck in cycles. So just don't do that shit anymore. One of the other things that I do is I make it really like a big ass effort when it's super cold outside to get some fresh air. So if it's really cold outside, I will just crack a window in my office. I work from home. If y'all would like to see, this is the PMP World Headquarters. <laughs> there is my whiteboard, there's my printer. There are my three monitors, <laughs> my podcast microphones, my beautiful certificates from the Life Coach School, and then my pictures. There was, there's the grand tour. This is where the magic happens. Every podcast, everything that you ever get from me, all starts here. It also means this is where I sit all the time. I do have a standing desk, so sometimes I stand at it. But this is, this is where it all happens. That means I'm in here all the damn time. When I want to go to the bathroom, I take two hot steps this way. That ain't that far. If I want to go to the kitchen, I go down this little hallway. Excuse my messy kitchen. I was looking at it earlier and I was like, all right, I'm cleaning the kitchen today because when I want to do a live from my kitchen, I shouldn't have to re like remodel. <laughs> but that's it. Like I have to make efforts to do things that are going to help me. So I crack windows to get fresh air. If it's half ass decent and sunny, I go outside. I may only walk for three minutes, but I make myself get outside and soak up a little vitamin D. Just get some fresh air. Just get a change of scenery. What depression loves is laying around in a, in a bunch of stinky clothes, in a whoopee, in your bed. It loves nothing but to breed on sleep and helplessness. So you have got to like be very aware that some days you're gonna have to help yourself. You, do, you don't have to get up and make like, you know, Herculean efforts. Like I always tell you guys, my minimum baseline and what I mean by minimum baseline is like the minimum I'm gonna do each day, especially when I feel myself getting depressed, 
I don't avoid showers. I make myself get clean, put on fresh clothes. I don't care if I come downstairs and sit on the couch under a blanket all day long, that's fine. But I can't stay in bed smelling like a piece of shit. I have to get up and do those things. I'm just gonna tell you, it helps. You know, when I'm not managing my depression, it means I'm gonna be gaining weight probably. Because if I'm not managing my depression with healthy habits, then I'm gonna manage it some other way. And I'm gonna manage it in a way that's like asinine, which means food. So I make lists of things that are gonna be helpful. The other thing I do is during the winter, I take vitamin D like a boss. I love taking vitamin D, it just helps. Also, um, I don't know, somebody told me recently that you're supposed to take vitamin D. I think it has to have K12 in it, K something. And that helps it get from just going in the blood but into the actual bone. Just a side note there. Um, she's a, a friend of mine who is like an MD and I think it was K12. So just so you guys know, if you're bu buying vitamin D, look for that. Again, I'm not an expert. I'm not like a doctor, so don't take that to the bank. You can Google that. The other thing I do, um, I have, I don't know if you guys can see it way back here. I have one of these Verilux lights. It's V-E-R-I-L-U-X. My mother-in-law, I asked her for that for Christmas last year. She was asked, people ask me all the time what I want for Christmas. And I was like, you know what? I want one of those light therapy things. I will turn that on and I will sit and like work or I'll like listen to a podcast and take notes. A lot of times I like to read and research things for my tribe. I'm always researching all different kinds of ways for us to, you know, heal relationships. And st the biggest problem we have with our weight is all this bullshit that goes on around us. So I do a lot of research on all the bullshit that goes on around us so I can tie that into how to lose weight. So a lot of times I'll put that on and I'll just read for like 20 minutes and I'll do my research. Uh, the other things I do besides fresh air is I make sure I get a lot of water, a lot of fresh air if I can. I take vitamin D, I do the light therapy. I really plan my sleep. I think that one of the things depression loves also is some sleep deprivation. It's so funny because depression loves sleep deprivation, and yet when you're really depressed, all you wanna do is sleep. But there's studies that show that people who are really depressed don't get good quality sleep. So I really make sure that I set myself up for the best sleep that I can get. I take um, Sleep Remedy. It's called Doc Parsley's Sleep Remedy. If you go to Kit, dot com slash fit and fat p h i t n p h a t you'll see those pills they have magnesium in them they also have a one gram or i think it's one gram of melatonin they also have tryptophan they are magic for helping you go to sleep and stay asleep without waking up groggy like i wake up ready to go Whenever I go like on conferences with my um, like my coaches or uh, colleagues and stuff, a lot of times we'll all room together, and they're always like, "Oh my God, you just bounce out of bed every day." And I'm like, "Yeah, I do," because I get a solid night's sleep, so it doesn't make you groggy. It also helps if you're constipated. That magnesium is magic. One of the things that magnesium does just for all of you that's helpful with seasonal affective disorder, it's helpful with depression too, especially people who are ADHD, uh, who have a racy mind and stuff. It, it some magnesium basically like heals the brain's nerve centers. So it kind of like makes those connections, like think of them as like frayed, it kind of smooths them out and stuff. So it helps calm all that down. So it's one of the reasons why it's really good for even just um, managing your mind and stuff. So I take that, I take that year round. I take the vitamin D basically just during the winter, during the summer months, I go to Vegas and I'm outside a lot. So I don't take vitamin D during that time of the year. I'm trying to think if there's any, I meditate some, I could do better with meditation. Uh, I meditate more during the winter. Like I will do a lot, like a lot of like, um, I'll want to take a break in the afternoon and a lot of times I'll meditate for a few minutes and then I'll take a quick nap. Because I work from home, guys, I know it's very fortunate for me. I work from home. So like a lot of times I'll schedule in my work day because I work, just to be honest, I typically will work around 10 hours a day, almost every day because I love my girls and I love my job. Like to me, it's not like work. It's just, 
it's just what I do. And so um, I'll schedule like a nap sometimes during the day, but I only nap for about 15 to 20 minutes. I don't like do like a three hour, like, you know, we're going under nap. I'll set a timer and get that little quick recharge. I used to snack during that time. One of the things that I figured out was that I did much better when I would take a nap, like a quick power nap, than just sitting and eating. And Because what I was doing was looking for a break and I decided to really give myself a break. And then really the last thing that I do that is super, super helpful is I love burning oils. So I burn a lot of citrus oils. Like I love lemon, I love grapefruit, I love the orange extracts and stuff. So I burn a lot of those during the day to give me energy. And then at night we burn just anything that we really like. Like my husband loves sandalwood, I love lavender. Um, we also like, there's a blend from doTERRA. Um, you, I mean, you can just go to, you could probably go online and find it, but there's a blend that they call Whisper that I love that is um, kind of romantical, but it's also calming, so I really like that. Somebody was saying bergamot. I think that's the way you say it. I have that also. I've got like all of them. Um, we also love to burn during the day. When I'm like working, I like to burn cypress mixed with some citrus. Cypress has been shown in Japanese studies to, uh, like really bring you to focus. So that's a really nice um, oil for focus and um, good deep work. Uh, just I just think that any tip or trick that you can do is helpful. And I, I think the bottom line before I go into questions that I wanna tell you guys is that, you know, I want you to think about depression in a different way. I don't want you to think of yourself as a victim of it. I think it's easy to think that and for some of us, it just it allows us to just fall into it, and that's the problem. When you are feel like you're a victim to it, or you just fall into it, you're not helping yourself. And in the end, you're gonna have to help yourself. You'll have to do like I've done all these years and figure out ways to do that. And I'm willing to try and do anything where it feels like I'm getting ahead of it. Oh, one of the last things I did want to mention that I do a lot of, and my tribe members will know this as a religion. I don't even have my, my journal in here. It was in, it's in the other room when I journaled this morning. I journal a lot. What I do, I write a lot. I will write, like, during this time of year, especially one of my common entries, is I just simply will write, today I'm feeling, and I'll like list a feeling, and I'll say, because. And then I'll just write that out. And it just feels good to kind of see what I'm thinking and why I'm feeling bad. And then I'll challenge myself to be like, do I need to think about it this way? Or is there any other possible way I could think about it? That allows me to just kind of move into a different way of thinking. It opens my brain up to the possibility that maybe I'm just depressed and I'm creating a lot of extra bullshit on top of something that doesn't need to be like, you know, thought of that way. And then the other thing that I will do is say like, today, the feeling I'd like to feel is, when I'm depressed, guys, I don't go for elated, happy, amazing. I don't do that. Very often when I'm feeling my worst, I'll ask myself, what do you want to be feeling today? And sometimes it's hopeful. Sometimes it's just, it fit, like I just wanna feel capable. Like, I don't need to feel amazing. I just need to feel capable today. And that is enough to get me out of the bed. And when I ask myself what I wanna feel, I just say like, all right, if I wanna feel this way, what are some things I can do that would prove that that's true? And I make a very easy list. Like, it could just literally be, I drink a glass of water, I take a shower, and I don't sit in bed all day. I sit on the couch all day. Your brain needs to feel like it's accomplishing something. Give it something easy to accomplish. It doesn't need to like solve the world's problems or you know, like pay all the bills and go do amazing things and ride for 45 minutes on a spin bike and all that other kind of shit. And the other, the last, I was gonna say one other thing that I do is I also, um, make sure that I'm exercising some during the winter. 
Like I love to exercise and I know for me, when I like suddenly don't want to exercise, that I need to like plan easy movement. Sometimes I will plan like today, I'm gonna get on my treadmill for five minutes and I'm gonna walk and I'm gonna listen to something uplifting from a podcast. I don't make it be an amazing workout. I make it mean a workout that moves me forward. All right, let's see. See if y'all have any questions. I'm gonna scroll about halfway up and see what happens here. Here's a PMP groupie. Uh, it looks like Ali Ala. She is down 20 pounds. Um, <laughs> Carrie says she's a groupie. I'd like to report that when you're used to emotional eating at night and then you stop, it indeed feels like ass. <laughs> That's funny. Um, Looks like one of my tribe, hey Liz, one of my tribe members, she's been feeling some seasonal disorder. Jill, I got a great quote from What Are You Hungry For by Deepak. Life is about fulfillment. If your life isn't fulfilled, your stomach can never supply what's missing. Oh my God, that is a great one. That is amazing. Um, laughing out loud, is she in the live asking about a piece of fucking bread? I just spit out my coffee. <laughs> Let's see. There's a lot of essential oil um, tips on here, guys. So if you're watching, if you're listening to the replay on the podcast, whoop, I almost kicked my, tread, uh, my tripod over. When um, this live, if you miss it, is always the Saturday podcast on losing 100 pounds with fit and fat. Uh, you can always also come to facebook.com slash PNP girl. Every video is always stored automatically by Facebook there. You can go and watch replays just to look at the comments. This particular uh, Facebook Live has a million and one good oils for you guys. Uh, it's K2, guys. It was K2 with vitamin D. Um, I take 10,000 uh, milligrams of vitamin D just for the girl who asked. Oh, somebody says, hey, Dana, I'm glowing. It's because I use that It Cosmetics and I just worked out. <laughs> the only, everybody's asking about my face. Well, here's two things that are helping. Number one, I'm standing in front of a window. So whenever you do a Facebook Live, if you stand in front of a window, you get natural light. Natural light always helps. And I wanted to be able to see outside because I'm gonna be spending the entire day and meet, I'm like, once I get off here, it's meetings until six o'clock tonight. I'm on like back-to-back -back calls literally all day. I'm teaching some, I'm coaching some, I have meeting with my coach, it's just like meeting day. So I wanted to be able to like actually see the outdoors. I also use It Cosmetics. I use their eye cream. I use their, um, it's called uh, Bye Bye Makeup, I think it's called. It's their it's like a cleanser for your face. It didn't do it on my eyes. It's not good enough. Like, look at that. I like, I just didn't do it. Oh, I should have. But I, um, I use that and it also moisturizes. And that's one of the things that really helps is moisturizing your face a lot, guys. I also use their face cream called um, The Secret Sauce. So I use that. I love their stuff. And I use Lip Slip Stuff by Sarah Happ. It's a scrub and um, like a cream and everything you put on your lips. It's my lips. They're dry now, but they are awful if I'm not really careful. As much water as I drink, you would think I would stay like properly hydrated, but I don't during this time of year. So I have to be like, I lotion my body. I use um, Philosophy. I use their shower gel and their lotions. Um, and I use um, Josie Marin Self Tanner. So I also use that, it's a, like a, you know, it's got that good argon oil. I'm just a big believer, like, so guys, y'all know I got all the loose skin in the world. So I'm like always very particular about making sure that I stay good and hydrated and all that kind of stuff. So, plus I will tell you this time of year, one of the nice things is like, I love using lotions and things like that because to me, it's a version of self care. And if you want to feel good, you have to take time to take care of yourself. A lot of us always think it's all about, you know, going out and getting a facial and a massage and you gotta do all these things. Just sometimes just lotioning and buying something that smells good and taking care of yourself in the little ways 
It adds up in your emotional bank. It helps you also keep your weight off. Like the more you're willing to take care of yourself in non-conventional ways, the less you feel like you need to take care of yourself with food. Let's see. The sleep stuff is called Doc Parsley's Sleep Remedy. Just go to kit.com slash fit and fat, P-H-I-T-N-P-H-A-T. Look in my kit store and you'll be able to find it. And I don't know if Paula, guys, if you're looking for a doTERRA rep, um, one of my girls who has been with me since oh, she joined PNP back in 2007, she's a doTERRA rep and I can hook you up with her if you're interested in doTERRA oils. All you need to do is um, just email support at pnptribe.com and we can get you Paula's contact information. Um, I'm teetering on fuck it. I'm constantly self-talking and I know today will be a great day because I say it will. Good for you, Louisa. I have noticed a difference with my, um, with my light. Uh, let's see. It was Alyssa. I have noticed a difference. I use it. I love it. Well, thank you for all the nice comments, Christy and Jennifer. Y'all are sweet. Um, Kelly has a groupie. Is there a narrative that you use when you don't get want to get out of bed? Yeah, it's called not an option. I just tell myself it's not an option. I prepare myself to know that I'm going to want to tell myself that it's okay, that uh, today just sucks, you're such a loser, you should stay in bed. No one's gonna give a shit whether or not you're in bed or not. Like I prepare myself to know that those are the things I will think. And I just tell myself, but that's the stuff that's not an option. And I, I mean, I just make an agreement with myself and I make myself get up no matter how bad it feels. I just tell myself, you do not get, you are not entitled to want to get out of bed. You are not entitled to be motivated. You are not entitled to like have all of this desire to do it. What you are entitled to is your future. And your future is what you're gonna create yourself. That's your job. That's what I tell myself. I mean, I'm just very clear with myself. There are just certain things it's like, we know where this goes, so get over yourself, get up and just get it done. And I also will tell myself, if you get up and you take a shower, and you go downstairs and get on the couch and you have the energy to walk your ass back to bed, have at it. But those two steps have to get done. That's why I set the bar so low. So she says, I own a business and when there's a big issue that I can't necessarily solve immediately, I feel like the wind has been kicked out of me. I always make it work, but I often don't show up for myself for almost a week around those times that things get tough. I find that I do play the victim and I have identified it recently. It almost always sounds, it surrounds things happening with my business that I can't solve immediately. Thank you so much. Here's what I always ask myself. If I wasn't gonna like waste a week of my life, what, was, what would be the solve be, what would the solve be right now? Like I just always tell myself, it's like, look, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. If we're gonna do it, if we're gonna fix it, we might as well just do it now and let's not pretend that a week of sitting around playing the victim is going to be a good deal. The only, like, and I'm going to tell you, I know this from being a business owner, and this happens with a lot of people who are, like, doing it with food and whatnot. The reason why we love, like, weddings and deadlines and stuff with weight loss is because at the last minute, you can kick yourself into high gear because you feel like you're forced to do something. You just need to give yourself a better deadline. You need to just tell yourself. I got other problems that are gonna creep up that I'm gonna to need to solve, so I better get this one out of the way now. Don't sit around and give yourself the, like pretend that you have the time to avoid your work. I mean, just tell yourself that's not part of the deal. Also, it doesn't sound like you plan very well. 
Because if you have your schedule completely planned when a problem arises, this, if you're not going to work on the problem, guess what you can do? Execute the rest of the plan. I'm a big believer. My God, if you ask my coaches, you ask my tribe members, I'm always like, where's your plan? Did you make a plan? Blah, 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 blah. Like, a plan guy, just about guys will solve anything, including depression. Because when you think about what you want to put on the plan that your best self can show up for, you've made your decisions. One of the worst things that depression does is like it doesn't want to make decisions. So make them ahead of time. Don't wait and uh, like allow yourself to be sitting there and think that the depressed version of you is going to figure shit out. No, she's not. She's going to stay in bed. That's why I plan for myself. So that on the days I feel like bullshit, that version of Corinne doesn't have more pressure on her. She doesn't have more to do. I'm protecting her now with the version of me that feels good. Um, yeah, Jen, reach out to your PNP tribe members. We, a lot of us have depression. Hell, I, you know why I know a lot of you have depression? Because you listen to my podcast and you end up joining PNP because you have depression. It's just like the same thing why a lot of the women have kids with special needs or a lot of the women have 100 pounds to lose. Y'all join because you listen to me and you're like, oh yeah, that's me too. And that's what makes our community so good is that you can find the people who are like you who also aren't going to enable you. Y'all know me. I'm not going to let y'all sit around and like kumbaya it and enable each other. Y'all are all going to sit around and talk about your issues and you're going to problem solve. That's what we do. What podcast would you recommend to start each day off in a positive way? I love Tony Robbins' podcast. I think his is amazing. He has them anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, Brendan Burchard also has a really good one. Um, if you look him up, he's really good. And um, Lewis Howes has a lot of uh, good podcasts. They're like He does these um, special clip versions that are like five to six minutes long. I love a lot of those because I like to be able to listen to something that's fast. So I would say those three for sure for like quick motivation and thought work. Debbie Taylor has lost 64 pounds because of uh, support. Um, when I say burn oils, I mean those aromatherapy water things. I don't mean actually like burning them with fire or whatever. Oh, a future New Year's baby. Hello, Cindy. And she's already lost 35 pounds. Um, ooh, Kelly. She's doing her, she's down 30 pounds. She's a groupie. And she's going to do her first marathon on Sunday. Amazing. Good luck, too. Uh, Heather says, you're amazing. I share your videos with my girls, not for weight loss, but... But your comments apply to so much more in life. Thank you for sharing. Guys, I really appreciate it when you guys are sharing the videos and, and the podcasts and stuff. It really does mean a lot to me. And um, if you want to do the free course so that you can get into the Facebook group, we always take this live and we share it to the uh, Facebook group for the groupies who listen to the free content so that they're all stored over there too. Stephanie, still having difficulty scheduling a call. I did email. The new schedule for next month is coming out on the 25th. Um, let's see, because I just set the schedule up yesterday. If you go in and it looks like nothing's available, it is because for December, we haven't put the slots up yet. They always go up sometime in the morning on the 25th. And we added um, more calls. So there's... Um, we're do, because we're studying relationships next month, and I wrote the course this month, we have um, a couple of calls that are dedicated to just relationship issues. We have at least one with me where, we're, where I'm only going to coach all overeating and stuff. And then we have four office hours 
for the coaches on Saturdays. So you can always get in there. If you like just show up on Saturdays for the coaches office hours and you just raise your hand, you can get in. Those we don't put book out so that anybody who can't get a scheduled call, all they have to do is go in there and they can get called on. And you never know when I will be the coach. That's the other thing. The coaches usually hand, handle them, but sometimes they like to both take a day off and that means that everybody's gonna get the queen that day. <laughs> Let's see. Greetings from Maine. This is Shira. You're, you recommended a podcast on emotional eating a while back that a friend of yours does. Can you remind me of what it is? Um, it's probably, let's see. If I had to guess, it's probably Brooke Castillo's uh, podcast, The Life Coach School. Um, she has some that are on emotional eating. She's my mentor. I tell you another good podcast that is not about emotional eating. It's actually about drinking, but I swear to God, guys, just plug in overeating. Rachel and I, we both went to the same school. We graduated from the same master class. We're both like, think about, we both have a, a master's degree in uh, weight and life coaching. We went through that year long program together. She has an amazing podcast. It's called Take a Break with Rachel Hart, H-A-R-T. Feel free to listen to her podcast. And she talks about drinking, but guys, it's the same concepts. I listen to Rachel's podcast. It's amazing. We both teach the same tools. Now, she doesn't cuss, but she's got a, she's, what I love about her podcast is you can just tell that she really thinks about the concepts she wants to teach you. I tend to like rail to get into your head. Like I think about the concept and then I preach it. And she, I think, teaches it. So I think you would really love her podcast. It's really, really good. <laughs> Eleanor, I work in a restaurant and find it so hard resisting free food, especially when I'm emotionally charged. What to do? Well, you're talking to someone who grew up in the restaurant industry and my husband has only been working in the restaurant industry for 25 years. <laughs> my uh, in-laws happen to own restaurants. Here's what you do. You tell yourself it's not free. It costs a lot of money and you wear all that currency right on your ass. Like it's not free. You need to tell yourself everything has a price. That's your biggest poison thought is that it's free. So you feel entitled to it or like it's a gift or whatever. It ain't no gift. If it's a gift of anything, it's the gift of fat. You need to just tell yourself like, look, I no longer decide to think this is free. The price I pay is weight gain. And when I'm emotionally charged and eating, the price I pay is not learning how to deal with my fucking emotions. I would start right there. Thank you, Christy. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Oh, uh, Rosanna just ordered many habits for weight loss. It's a book guys. You can go to that same kit store I've been talking about. It is so good. I highly recommend it for you guys. It talks the same things that I talk about, about what it does is it not only does it give you some many habits, but it teaches you the concept of how small things do matter. Like with depression, with weight loss, with everything, how the small things matter. Let's see. Lots of people who do the lights. <laughs> All right, guys, let me call it here. Looks like most of the questions have been answered. It's just a lot of people like, guys, I would highly recommend if you have been, um, Oh, Stephanie, can you just email support again or just post it in the tribe and tag uh, tag uh, Betsy and say, like, I, I need some help with getting the calendars. I seem to see nothing on the calendar, even past calendars. Uh, you may need to refresh your settings and stuff. That might be part of the problem then, Stephanie. Um, go to the podcast, guys. 
losing 100 pounds with fit and fat, please share it. Please leave a review. I would love it if you would leave reviews. Um, it really just helps me kind of see what you guys like about the podcast and stuff so that Kathy and I can do more of it. If you want more help than just this live and just the podcast, take my free course. I highly recommend anybody who's ever going to consider working with me when we have openings that you go through that free course first. It's pnp411.com. You will see it says free course right there. You'll get a video that explains the three tools to weight loss and you'll get a workbook. I would really recommend you go through it. And just so everyone knows, we are going to do the Back to Basics Challenge starting the day after Christmas. So if you take the free course and you're on or on the PNP Tribe wait list at pnptribe.com, you will get invited to the Back to Basics Weight Loss Challenge. We're going to run it again. I got a little bit of new things that I want to teach you guys this time. I try to mix every one of them up just a tad so that they're not always exactly the same. And we will uh, rock and roll and open the tribe in January. Just know if you're going to want to get in, do it in January because I won't open again. I think not until April. And I don't want you to be sitting there and bought some stupid meal plan. And I'm all about a gym, but don't like go and think that's going to be your answer and you're not going to work on your mind. If your mind is your problem, quit working externally. Start working on your brain. When you lose your mental weight, you will lose your physical weight. So if you think you want to work with me, January is the time. Because what you don't want to be is be like, oh, I should have got in. Because I don't let, once we close, guys, I don't let people in for real. So you won't get in until April. So make sure that if you're thinking about it, get on the wait list so that you can get in. All right, guys, I will see you next Wednesday. Have a very happy Thanksgiving. Take care of yourselves, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, y'all.